What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Can't Stop Playing Podcast, Episode 3. I'm your host, Zach Ghost Robo, and joining me today, as always, from a land afar, a land of clouds, Scott Game Riot. A land of clouds. Do you not have any clouds where you are? Though? It's been really sunny here, and I always hear people like moaning, like, oh, London is so cloudy. Is, is that like a, a true statement? I don't, I don't mind the weather at the moment. It's sort of like um, it's, it's got sun out, but it's not too hot. Uh -huh. so it's like, it's all perfect conditions for me, really. Yeah. I like it. But overall, is it typically like more dreary and like bleak? Uh, to be honest, it hasn't been too bad. People just keep moaning for the sake of it. Maybe people been, like to complain. It rained a little bit. Yeah, people rained yesterday. It rained yesterday. <laughs> Apart from that, it's been fine. So maybe it's really a statement on the uh, the people just like to whine than <laughs> it is on the actual weather itself, huh? Well, we, we either say it's too cold or we say it's too hot, so we just go... People are just... We, we're never happy. Never, yeah. never pleased. Well, we are both, I think, pretty pleased because E3 is upon us. We're a mere, gosh, like three, four days away from the start of the big show, and it came a little bit early. We got a bunch of announcements that we will talk about, including some very sad ones. But first, let's kick it off with what we've been playing this week. Scott, have you been playing anything new? Uh, I played Mur Murdered, Soul Suspect, a bit more Watch Dogs, and a bit more of the Forest game as well. So they finally so added saving. Out. They did. They added saving in. Um, so you can save your progress if you go to like your little hut. Woo! You can save it, and you go to sleep and stuff, and it's quite cool. But um, I found that the infantry just disappears. So you collect like stuff like flares. Um, you can collect food, uh, like chocolate bars for like energy and stuff, and they just disappear so you gotta restart from scratch so you get, basically you get back. robbed every night yeah. and just have to that's uh it's weird so you can save your progress but you can't save your progress kind of a yeah it's like half <laughs> quite the and then once uh, I, paradox no, I, then I was trying to cut the limbs off this uh this cannibal uh -huh. and it i just blew up and i just just literally flew in the sky and i died Aww. so that was that's fun. It's definitely early alpha yeah. for sure. a very early game now murdered soul suspect yeah. um this mm -hmm. is the game about a detective who is dead um, and it got a bunch of hype when it first was announced and then it sort of petered away how did the final product turn out uh, i mean it's got some interesting ideas but visually it doesn't look particularly that that appealing mm -hmm. to me um looks very sort of average it's cross-gen correct it, yes i got it on ps4 though so it should look better really yeah. but it looks i mean it looks okay but it's got some interesting ideas with the detective stuff like you, you go around like certain scenarios you're trying to find like, all the all the all the clues and some are quite hard to find and you can like um, you can like, possess people, so you can like, look at what they're thinking and look at what they're looking at and stuff. And it's, it's definitely some interesting ideas, but I feel like they've perhaps run out of time or run out of money, and they've just sort of stopped working on it. Apparently, the game is very short as well. Mm -hmm. I've been hearing like four or five hours uh, to finish the game, which is actually really short. So is it like an That's, I'm judging it. Venture yeah, game. Sorry, gone. Um, yeah, it's like it's the sort of detective. There's like demon creatures in there as well, but you would go. It's actually more scary, scary being a ghost, which makes no sense. <laughs> you think, which is weird, and yeah, it's it's quite interesting though. It's just I feel like this is half baked. It's not finished. If that makes okay. no sense. I mean, is there gameplay? Yeah. Is it something like Heavy Rain, or is it more Walking Dead style, uh, where you're just walking around talking to people? I mean, you can you can take out the demons. Okay. So you, you are you are controlling them. Um, I'd say it's a bit like Heavy Rain. Okay. It's got a sort of weird vibe. A little bit of Alan Wakener as well. All right. So it's that sort of, that sort of feeling, I think. But yeah, it's interesting. Is the but, story itself like keeping you going? Because it seems like to me in, in that game, if the story is not hot, then you're going to get bored really fast. I'd say it's pretty good. I wouldn't say it's like I'm desperate to go back on it, but it's pretty good. It's intriguing. I want to see what happens. Um, basically, you're trying to find a killer that killed him, right. which is quite ironic, but he's like a mass murderer and... So it's got a very heavy rain sort of vibe. Um, so yeah, interesting, but half-baked. But this is something I always think about with games like this, because I, I do think it's cool that they try different ideas and and mm -hmm. don't just do the typical, oh, first-person shooter, third-person shooter, go, go, go. Mm -hmm. But for a title like this, do you think it would be much more successful if it came out at a $40 or $50 even price point? Like a, a game that, hey, it's not your AAA Call of Duty, it's not your AAA Batman, it's not going to get that kind of marketing push do you think people would be more willing to to go after and, and try out a game like this if it was at a slightly lower price point? I don't think it would help. I, I did actually notice in the UK at least the price has actually dropped quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, where I think I ended up buying mine was I think mine was thirty two pounds, which is uh, that's on next gen as well. Okay. So that was a that was a bit less money, and I think it was like twenty five pounds on the on the last gen. So they did try and perhaps sort of I guess they look at pre orders and then perhaps adjust the price. Mm. Um, Depending on the scenario, yeah, it's, it's a full yeah, sixty here. Yeah, 
yeah so yeah which is i mean it's quite short and it's not much to do afterwards so it's sort of like a rent or wait for the price to go down sort of game right in my opinion i mean like you think like oh if you lower the price then we're not gonna actually it is 50 bucks here already um in okay. the u.s too well, so maybe quick. maybe they're taking note of what we're thinking but if, yep. if, some people <laughs> really. think like oh if you drop the price then you're not gonna make as much money but i almost feel yeah. like you could achieve sort of a steam effect which is hey, we have a lower-priced game, so we sell more of them, ultimately make more money. I, I think the concern is probably, like, if you're lower-priced, then it makes it seem like your game is less than. Like, if it's not matching up price parity with other titles, oh, if Watch Dogs is 60 and Murder is 40, does that automatically mean Murder is the worst game? And I don't think it means it's the worst game, but I think it's just an acknowledgement, like, hey, we aren't going to get, you know, the 500 million that Destiny got. Yeah, I mean... Perhaps to the average consumer, they may be, oh, that's, why is it less money? It must be not as good. But then guys like us that or guys watching this podcast will like realize, oh, the reviews are good for this game. And then like obviously stuff like Plants vs. Zombies will realize that game is, is a good game and it's just slightly cheaper because it's slightly not a big game to make. Sure. Um, I think it just opens the window because, so. you know, if you're limited on budget, you're probably only going to get your favorite series or games that are 9 out of 10 yeah. type. Call of Duty, right. FIFA. And, like and then... If you had a lower price point, then maybe if a game gets a 6 out of 10 or 7 out of 10, you'd be like, eh, 40 bucks, I'll, I'll give this a chance. But mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. It's something that I think would be interesting for companies to explore. I don't know if they they ever will. There's been talks actually at E3 of price drops for a lot of stuff. Um, oh, really? 360, PS3, which I could easily see. Oh, what, the actual consoles? Yeah, mm -hmm. like dropping them yeah. more to a media, like a media player price point. So getting them in that like 100 to 150. Interesting range which i think would be so weird because there's so many cross-gen games it's not like oh it's defunct you know what i mean it's not like oh you're buying a ps2 that has no games it just can play dvds like they're mm -hmm. still making tons of games for ps3 and, and 360 so it seems like a price drop would almost sabotage next gen greatly i feel like if the, if the ps3 dropped down in price with netflix and blu-ray that could do really well for them and potentially catch up with um the sales of the xbox yeah. I, know, I know in america the xbox is is dominating right. still but in europe ps3 is still uh on top so yeah i i just think it's interesting because they still like far cry 4 and and you're still gonna be able to get yeah. these games on those systems so dropping them lower why not just buy then a 360 and save all your money for a ton of games in the fall what's the without the well that's the that's when we get the comparisons in terms of graphics and then people go oh well there's more features on this one, or this game looks a lot prettier, and they got to try and just judge it. Sure. But I'm sure they're going to push at E3. I don't, think, I don't think they do the price drop during the conference. Maybe something I think they post. Yeah, yeah, I reckon it'll be like before or after. A little later in the summer, even yeah. maybe to, to try to yeah. drive sales pre holiday. Well, I haven't been playing anything new, unfortunately, <gasps> or fortunately, mm. because I've been playing Mario Kart 8, which is freaking fantastic. We don't need to go over mm -hmm. that again. Um, and more Watch Dogs. And uh, I, I'll, the quick note I'll make on Watch Dogs is sometimes I just find myself in really funny situations where, like, in order to stop a crime, you have to shoot somebody, but then someone else calls 911, and then you yeah. shoot them to stop the cops from coming, and then, like, all is well. So you're trying to stop violence, but then you create way more violence, and then everything's calm, which just feels so... Like, I'm driving around the city, and why can't the cops find me? It, it makes <laughs> very little sense, but I'm still enjoying the game. Yeah. Um, quite a bit. I've kind of, I'm into the end of Act Two, just about in Act Three, which it's, that Act mm -hmm. Two, oh my God, still quite a bit to do. Dan. I feel like I've been playing for yeah. Act Two years. is like 15 missions. Yeah, I think I think Act Three might be eight. So you got <laughs> quite a big chunk. Yeah, I, but yeah, I've just finished it and I, I liked it. Good fun. So you completed the game entirely. Do mm -hmm. you think the story pays off? Because to me, like. I really enjoy the stealth mm. stuff, but I'm kind of in, into the story as well. Does it get really goofy at the end, or do they tie things up nicely? I, was, I think it ties up fairly nicely. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go into it too much because I don't want to spoil it sure. for anyone watching. But um, and you, but I, I like the I, the ending was pretty good. Um, I, don't, I won't say anymore. No paranormal. Like, like anything. There's no zombies that appear. Crazy monsters. No zombies. No. Okay. No. <laughs> that's a that's definitely a good thing. Now on to games that were announced this week. Which one do you want to hit up first here? For me, I think the big one's got to be Homefront. I'm excited about Homefront. Homefront 2. Is it, is it called 2? Homefront, is it, what, what is it? Homefront Revolu Revolution. It's been referenced yeah. in both ways. I've seen a picture that said Homefront uh, 2, mm. but then in their press release, it's Homefront The Revolution. 
So I'm trying to get away from that old game. I guess. <laughs> it's separate. It's not the same. Well, it seems like it's... From what I've heard, it has more in common with Crisis than it does Homefront 1. It sounds like it's... Which worries me a little bit anyway. Yeah. Not, using, Crisis really got old for me. Using quickly. the same engine, using the same... Not only visual engine, but it sounds like a lot of mechanical uh, engine as well in terms of when you go to switch attachments on your gun, it holds it up to your face just like when um, your hunter would, you know, whatever, mix his different, what are they called in that game, perks or, or whatnot. Um, and just the way that you can mark people, the way the game interface looks, sounds like That's they... Very similar. Yeah, using a lot of the Crisis stuff, which, ugh, I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, Crisis 3 really didn't get me going at all. <laughs> I don't know, it just... Got really boring for me very very quickly I, will I mean it looks pretty but yeah they're always gorgeous and i'm sure this one will look good as well it's next gen only which give them props for that i um, mean it's an open world shooter i'm not like when i hear open world i think of grand theft auto but crisis is definitely a yeah. more open world ish type shooter do you think is, it, is that what they mean like yeah. open world as in like crisis sort of you can do you can take it Differently, different approaches. I'm not entirely it. sure. You know, they talked about you're going to be in Philadelphia and you're trying to sort of incite this revolution mm. and going around and accomplishing tasks and whatnot. So it does sound like there is mission type stuff. I, I, I don't have a full grasp. Maybe we'll see more at E3 of if there's like, oh, a hub world and then you go out to levels or if it truly is just running around and there's... Uh, that, that just doesn't sound like it can work. I, I don't see how... I don't know. Like, randomly the Koreans invade this street. Go take them out. Like, it... A truly open world shooter would feel so strange. It's always the same bloody enemies, though, isn't it? It's always the Russians, yeah. the Koreans. Why can't it be the evil Americans for once? <laughs> is that what your that's your secret dream? Is that one day you'll play a game? Well, just, it just feels like it's the three same countries, and I feel like I don't know, do something else. Because I mean, us us for example, the UK were evil at one point, I guess in some way. Yeah. The US was a bit dodgy at one point, but. It's just, <laughs> It's always like they always seem to focus on Russia, the obvious ones, and Germany. And I know we're going that bit of weird route, but I think they should do something different. I know what you mean. I mean, Anything. does yeah. this game pique your interest at all? Homefront One was kind of a uh, a half baked, decent ideas game, but didn't really materialize in anything fantastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Homefront name to me doesn't carry any excitement. But no, I, I, I don't understand why they're using it. Yeah. To be honest, because I know I know it got like a bit of buzz behind that. Like the last game, I don't. Was it, was what buzz was it? I don't even know what it was. It's like people were expecting it to be a good game, and then it failed. I think the big buzz was just the the concept of oh, North Korea invades America, and it's going to be brutal, <laughs> and it's going to be. Okay. At the time, the idea of that and the imagery of that was really, um, you know, the game opens up and they're you know lining people up and shooting them, and and sort of like oh, it hits close to home type, you know. I worry that like Crytek is is very very talented and stuff. They make visually good games and. The worlds always look amazing, but I feel like they can't make a really good game. If that makes any sense. They can't make the combat to be like appealing enough, or the story's not appealing enough. I just feel like they're not really good at making it all come together. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping they've invested more talent in that sort of area, but I don't know. I'm just going to find out. But I've heard some some worried. things that this game was being worked on and then scrapped, and so they kind of sucked up this studio so that that work wouldn't go to waste. Um, and it's hard to tell, you know, is this a game that basically they just slotted into the Crisis formula and, oh, it's going to have Homefront's name on it, um, or or what? Crytek announced another project this week as well, which is Hunt Horrors of the Gilded Age, which, mm -hmm. that's a mouthful of a name. Um, <laughs> but this one is a co-op free-to-play game for next-gen consoles. Oh, it's free-to-play. Yeah, it? it's free-to-play for next-gen consoles and PC, and it looks basically like an old-fashioned Left 4 Dead. Yeah, it's like an old sort of vibey Left 4 Dead. It feels like it almost directly copied it, but then it's it's old fashioned. -y vibe. Right, <laughs> it does a very 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 similar, doesn't it? I will say that like the the bright point on this one that that gives me hope and, and I'm crossing my fingers um, is that it's formed. Uh, the studio making the game is formed by former uh, Vigil Games people who are are the, the dudes who made Dark Siders. Um, so that I thought both those games were pretty solid, um, mm -hmm. and I would be interested to see you know how that how their past you know figures into this game they're talking that there's going to be a bunch of monsters and the farther you get the more intense the monsters get there's big boss fights um i it's kind of hard with these announcements you know you get these mood trailers basically that don't really show you anything about yeah, the game it's just a name really. and all we have I mean, to go on is what they say yeah i mean what's this how's it going to work is it like a free to play is it going to be like 
microtransactions all the time, like buying guns or... I mean, it's always a bit dodgy, isn't it, those sort of games? Right, I mean... Especially with this, like, big AAA sort of game as well. They could do either the, you know, oh, guns and skins and mm -hmm. perks and upgrades type model, or they could do more of a, like, Killer Instinct thing, like, hey, download the first map for okay, free. Yeah, new, yeah, new characters, new maps. If you want to buy the rest of the game, it's, you know, thirty nine ninety nine. How do you feel about that? Because to me, like, I just have this... And I admit it's a little bit silly, but I have this pre-baked notion in my mind like, oh, it's free. I have to download it. It's not going to be as good as, you know, the next big $60 game. Does that factor in with you? It's always that, always related back to like people that preview it. I always watch videos and stuff that really either gets me excited or it doesn't get me excited. So like, yeah, like your point is like if it's a free game, it must be crap. But <laughs> I do tend to look at stuff more, more in detail than like look at videos or read previews or watch podcasts and I, I generally get excited for that game based off a journalist saying it's good. or yeah. So it's more like the feedback before the game comes out. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think I this one mean. looks interesting. To me, I'm more hyped for this than, than Homefront the Revolution. And apparently it's going to okay. be at Crytek's booth at E3. So you and I will have to go and maybe co-op it up and see uh, see yeah. if it's if it's cool. Mm -hmm. It's weird to get all these announcements before E3. I mean, a couple of people asked us questions you know, about that. And I don't think it's because the games are crappy i just think it's because these are games that would get lost in the shuffle um if they were announced e3 so they give them a little space and announce them beforehand so that they have the light of day so that we can talk about them because i think if Homefront: the revolution or hunt horrors of the gilded age was announced in the midst of halo 5 and zelda wii u it would get you know 10 seconds just of time. trampled on yeah i mean stuff like um forza for example which, which i guess we speak about in a second yeah. that was Apparently, Microsoft is struggling to fit F inside this conference right. in that one and a half hours. So they're like chucking things out. So I guess like now they can just try, just try this gameplay because it's been announced already. It's like, oh, we've got a new game. And they just go, oh, here's a new game. Enjoy the gameplay. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> so it's like 10 minutes instead of like 15 minutes. Yeah, which I like. So, it sounds like both companies, yeah. Microsoft and Sony, who knows what Nintendo does with their you know stream event. Um, but Microsoft and Sony are trying to cut the fluff, like cut the numbers, cut the, mm -hmm. just give people what they want to see, which I, I like. I think Sony will still have a, we've had a really good year yeah, this year. <laughs> We're beating all the competitions. Like, big smiles in their faces. And, Look at this epic graph. Yeah, they could. Uh, they will do that for like five, ten minutes. I guarantee it. Because they do like doing stuff like that. So. As the racing fan of the the duo here, does Forza Horizon mm -hmm. 2, does that do anything for you? I, I was slightly gutted when I heard it was on 360 as well. But then I heard, for this from you, they're doing, it on like, they're doing separate developers. Right. So one's working on 360, one is working on the Xbox One version. So that got me a little bit more excited. But apparently it's running in full HD, 30 frames a second, which I think is probably fine for a racing mm -hmm. game. Um, yeah, that sounds exciting. I like the, I the whole open world as well. So it's all racing in an open world. And the game looks, from the screenshots I've seen, I mean, screenshots are dodgy. But sure. from what I've seen, it looks very, very attractive. It's in Europe as um, well. So there you go. Yeah, so maybe you can um, drive by your house. <laughs> um, the the weird part to me is like, I understand splitting it cross gen so you get more sales. But if you're Microsoft trying to push your next system, why are you making it? I mean, to me, that just makes it seem like, hey, this isn't going to be a big seller. Nobody's going to buy an Xbox One to play Forza Horizon Two. So who cares? We might as well split it across, you know, the generations. Yeah, that's something. Do you know that Halo collection? I wonder if it's going to be on three sixty as well. Yeah, that makes no, no point, but. It could be. <laughs> We've seen this in some way. Major Nelson, um, the big guy from uh, from Xbox and Microsoft, posted mm -hmm. a picture because they just released drivers for the Xbox One controller and PC. Uh, Which I've tried and it works. It works. That's very works. nice. It's glad that they finally got that. It's cool how they're kind of, I think Microsoft has handled this pre-E3 period really well, getting a lot of the sort of important but not yeah. flashy stuff out of the way so we don't have to sit there and hear about netflix and hear about the price drop and hear about drivers for 15 minutes you know they can slot in three more games but there was a picture of a windows tablet playing halo 2 with an xbox one controller which that's got to be a, a huge tease towards whatever they're going to reveal for xbox one i mean do you think it is going to be just halo 2 anniversary or do you think they'll go all in on a master chief collection I think it'll be all in. I think there may be options to perhaps if you buy online, they'll be like, you can buy Halo 1 for this price or buy Halo 2 for this price or do the whole thing yeah. as a massive bundle. It'll be like a choice. But like I was discussing before the podcast, I mean, how are they going to work? Like, can we play Halo 2 online? 
or could we play Halo 3 right. online or could we play like ODST online or Reach it's like which one do we play it gets really messy so, I mean I could see them doing something where like okay Halo 2 Anniversary is the base product and then we have a collector's edition where you can also get the campaigns from 1, 3 and 4 but no like no multi I mean, stuff I mean I probably prefer the campaign from the 1 I prefer the multiplayer from obviously 2 yeah. so I'm like what the hell do I play it's weird like, that's going to be an interesting product how they frame it I mean if it's just Halo 2 that seems I bet it, actually I bet they do like Halo 5 beta access yeah, in it to make people buy it but do you think like, do you think Halo down. 2 is worth 60 bucks on Xbox One not by itself but I'm hoping they do like a collection yeah. and it'll be perhaps worth it I mean I'm, I don't I mean, I'm not like oh my god I know some people are like oh my god about it but sure yeah me neither but I'm going for Halo 5, one, whatever number it is. I'm losing track now. but Yeah, I hope we. Uh, I hope that impresses. I hope they mix up the formula. Um, a game that's not mixing up the formula is Mortal Kombat 10. I don't know if we have much to say on this because it was just, again, like a sizzle trailer. With... It was like a, C, a CGI trailer. It wasn't, it wasn't even gameplay. Yeah, so, or... I mean, man, we're coming up to E3, and what's your bet? 70% CG trailers, 80% CG trailers? It's going to be ridiculous. I think, they, I think they know that we like we be like to see gameplay, so I don't know why they keep doing this. Plus, they look so good now. It's not like, oh, GameCube yeah. era where it looks like a piece of crap. You know, you can... The real game Infamous doesn't look that much better in cutscene than it does in exactly. gameplay, yeah. so... I mean, I've seen some of the pictures from, like, that, that share thing, and people, like, can frame their pictures Crazy. and stuff. It looks, some pictures look amazing. I get people going, well, the game doesn't run in 60 frames a second, so it's crap. I mean, goodness gracious. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Stupid. the point of it's these stuff. mood CG trailers is to convey the feeling of the game. And I feel like that was effective, like I said, one, two, three generations ago when the actual game, mm -hmm. like, oh, you can make this sweet CG trailer of, you know, Grand Theft Auto, and it looks all awesome, or whatever game it is, Resident Evil, and it looks all awesome. And then the actual game is like these pixelated monstrosities. But now, like, the actual game gives you the feeling of the game because it looks super sweet. When you're playing as Aiden Pierce in Watch Dogs, when you're playing as Delson in Infamous, when you're playing as, you know, the the pilots in Titanfall, you get that sense straight from the game. We don't need a mood trailer mm -hmm. to convey the mood of a game that perfectly conveys the mood for itself. It's beyond me. Um, I mean, Mortal Kombat, for example, the music does not fit that game at all. You didn't like the hip-hop track? <laughs> I was like, did you, did you like it? I know you, you got a different taste to me, but I was like... I do not like this. It's not fit. I like this, like freaking dancing around. Or yeah, something. it's. I, I would have just liked I mean, to see a cool fight. He... I think just show us a fight. Yeah. Show us that fight in game, and it's always Scorpion wins as well. Do someone different. <laughs> <laughs> Supposedly they're announcing always brand new characters at E3. So uh, get over here. Brand new guys from Mortal Kombat. I mean, maybe it's because the games are so early they can't show gameplay. But I don't know that. It seems like they could find a way to find thirty seconds of valuable footage to put together uh, that's not the saddest I mean, news of the week though the uh oh don't talk about the this real sad news we're gonna get our no. grab your your <laughs> handkerchiefs and, and grab your your uh batman was delayed till next year with no date uh, I didn't even like say, oh, it's coming out February 14th. No, it's, no, it's out next year this seems like screw everyone do you get a sense that this is like a total like I don't want to be accusatory, but like a bait and switch thing. Like, oh, Warner Brothers wanted to to push sales, push pre orders. We they came out with a date, they came out with a box art, they came out with oh Harley Quinn pre order this that, and, and then yeah. oh sorry, wasn't it his exact date as well? Wasn't yeah. it like it was, yeah, it was like October like twenty first or something, and it's like it's coming out. Right. It's like, and this wasn't like last year. This was in March, uh, two and a half three months ago. So it just feels like. <sighs> big announcement big pre-orders get those sales going oh it's it's delayed i don't I, i'm personally very sad about the delay i guess i don't mind it if the game is better for it but i just think no, we, i hate everyone keeps saying that the game will improve well don't give us a date then yeah. just give us a date of 2015 and then give yourself time to make right. it if you think you're not that they, they were clearly going to just about make it if they were going to try and push for that date why why give it that date it makes no sense. I don't like people go, oh, well, they give more time to make it. Yeah, well, fantastic, but don't give a date first of all. Yeah, that's my... It's just, like, misleading, and it's... Hearing, like... I don't want to say who, but hearing, like, PR people talk about pre-orders, mm -hmm. they really want to push pre-orders all the time, so I wasn't surprised when they start making updates. No, of course. Every game these days is getting delayed. Every game. I don't think you can it's get mad at me. the actual developers, because they probably want to make yeah, the game as, as good and as fast as they can. It's like a... This is like a publisher PR problem more yeah. than... Yeah, sorry, yeah. You know, I don't, I don't think, I don't know. We got an interesting email from uh, 
Joshua Banks here who says, I wanted your two cents about the overall delaying of games that were thought to be released this year. Batman, Mad Max, The Order, The Division, Halo 5, The Witcher 3, Dying Light. Is it maybe because a lot of games were announced for similar release periods and now developers are scared to go against each other in competition? Is it because the new generations of consoles need more time with hardware that they didn't expect? Or do you think that everyone is just so overindulged with games that they're pushing them back? Um... What what is your take? Do you think these are delayed because of improvement? Do you think they're delayed because of mm-hmm. clutter? Do you think they're delayed because of not enough consoles out there? Because Batman Arkham Knight was next gen only. To me, Batman maybe might have been October just being too full when they think, oh, well, we'll just push it back to when we got a nice little free slot and everyone can focus on us. Um, I don't know. It's hard to say, isn't it? I think Batman, but though, I've... don't you feel like Batman could have been the biggest selling game of that month? Yeah, it could have been, definitely. It feels like this year is now turning into like an Ubisoft year again. Yeah. I feel like they're going to be the, the winners. They, they, they've got too many games and everyone's going to struggle. I mean, if they them, hit, they've got honestly. Watch Dogs, Crew, Far Cry 4, Assassin's Creed Unity, Assassin's Creed Last Gen. That's five games. Yeah, just going to just blow everyone out of the wall. In like six months, which is... And they don't have a lot of competition now. I mean, obviously, they don't have much other games to compete against. I would say that for this one... My guess is that either A, they needed more time, or B, they're waiting for the install base to, to grow. Depending on if this has I been... I think install base is surprisingly big, though. It's got it's done well. I don't know why they've got... Oh, well, we're panicking now. Well, it, why do it? I don't know. Do you think it depends on the cost, though? Because this has been three years in development, and mm-hmm. I mean, I, I have to imagine a game like Destiny, the reason that's cross is because of money. And with this oh, yeah. committing only to next gen... But again, like they knew that when they announced the date, so why did they? Do you think they may go back to uh, being last gen as well? No, I I can't. That would be a disaster of a move for them. But I, I just wonder if this is going to get pushed to next fall. I mean, or or at least summer. Why would you release this in February? Which you were mentioning to me earlier already has what? Witcher, Dying Light already, and the order is early 2015. Mm -hmm. It's like, I feel like every. You know, people talk about, oh, is is 2014 now getting delayed to 2015? Is 2015 the new 2014? And I feel like lately we say that every year. Like, there's so many delays that every year we're just waiting for the next year um, and then waiting for the next year. And I think it kind of, do you think it almost dilutes the games that they're delayed? And then some people might be more excited, like, oh, longer anticipation. But in some ways it feels like it almost kind of kills the fire. Yeah, to me it dents it, but to be honest, Watch Dogs didn't suffer at all in terms of sales. They've done really well, so it clearly doesn't hamper them that much. No. It's always find it funny that they never seem to release games in January. Yeah. It's like it's just a dead month. I mean, is that because of Christmas, I guess? Like, no one's got any money, so don't release any games. I'm guessing... Yeah, I think I think that's probably... Ad dollars are all spent, money is all yeah. spent, so it's out there. But, mm-hmm. like, to me, like... Okay, if you have a big release like Batman, and we're yeah. all excited for it all year long, and then we finally get to play it, that is more exciting than, oh, you're excited for it, oh wait, it's delayed, and now it's like four months out of when you're expecting to play it. Sure, it could still be great, no doubt about it, but I guess I just like when they hold their date, you can look forward to it, and it feels like a big event. Like, not to toot my my Nintendo bandwagon horn, but Smash Brothers being so anticipated, they're going to hit the holiday 2014 date that's going to release, and... It'll be like a glorious Christmas vacation thing to play, and if that got delayed, say till March, what what Mario title got delayed? Not or just Nintendo title got delayed? Was it Mario Kart? Um, I think Mario Kart was supposed to be March, and then they bumped it to May. I believe that's how it was. I, I don't know. I mean, ultimately, it's going to be a game. We're going to buy it. We're going to play it. It's going to hopefully be really fun. But I just get I get so bummed with these delays. Like, don't don't put a date. I get seriously. Like, yeah, so I say don't give us don't give us a date. Publish the publishers clearly and the PR and the, the developers want to give a date and the exact date and be ready. I'm sure of it. They don't like it. I mean, the way they've done it as well. That was that really. I don't mean like the trailer. It was like freaking Batmobile tank time, and it was like end of the trailer. Like, oh yes, yeah, been delayed. Huh? Right. With no date, and it's just like just it's coming in 2015. It's like what? I've heard a few people really mention weird. that. Uh, what if there is a big gun coming out? that some of these games are trying to get out of the way of like what if microsoft or sony has a big game in october slash november for next gen that they're worried about 
if I can think about it, it's like a rock star game. But I mean, what, what else would freak them out that much? It's not want to come out. Yeah, I, to me, I could see if this was uh, the Lord of the Rings Shadows of Mordor game. I could see if Evolve seems like the game that would get delayed out of the yeah, fall. I would be scared. Rush, would, but yeah. Batman to me would have been like the big game. Like that would have been. Well, yeah, it's like a gameplay trailer of Batman on TV, and everyone's just like, gonna go, "Oh my god, it's on PS4 and blah blah blah." Sony could do like exclusive content for it or something and just really pump that game and get sales and it just doesn't make any sense to me it's like it's like a, a it's, it's gonna be a must buy for me <laughs> I'm desperate for that game so but. strange I would say oh maybe they're delaying it to match it with the movie but that new Batman mm-hmm. movie was delayed till 2016 so that definitely can't be it Batman just... probably should do like a Batman versus Superman game yeah. for it. <laughs> that would be interesting it's a it's a one on one fighting game two characters it, actually it could be I mean <laughs> about the guys that done the Origins game could they not work on like next gen use the same engine yeah, they could. and do like a superman in it oh for sure Yay. for sure Good um cameron parker Good has a quick little aside on this topic before we wrap it up just saying do you think there's any actual advantages to video game delays other than it being more polished and refined um you know and i, th- I think what's interesting about this is the average consumer i don't think knows if a game is more polished or refined they just know it's on store shelves and there it is so is the advantage that to me, like a game like Batman, it's going to sell whether it's great or whether it's good. I don't think that really matters. People aren't going to like mm-hmm. go read the review and be like, oh, 8.2, not a 9.4. Dang. But in terms of like pre-orders, in terms of hype cycle, do you think extending it out gives them any advantage in terms of sales numbers? I don't think like perhaps if they have like lack of pre-orders and then say like they had a few like bad previews and they think, oh, this isn't really going very well. Mm-hmm. Just push it back by a couple of months and we can like work on DLC. I mean, could that be like a thing they could think? Like, is that saying a solution maybe? Is that why they could push it back or to get to just basically boost their numbers and just yeah, just like perhaps go to the drawing board again with like the PR and the advertising and just try and push it more. I don't know. Yeah, I think maybe it's also a money thing. There's so much that goes on behind the scenes with these publishers. You know, we don't know, for for example, I'm totally making this up. There's no proof behind Mm -hmm. this, but Warner Brothers could have been like, hey, we are not going to have the capital to push the marketing in October like we wanted. Let's wait till Q1 Mm -hmm. or Q2 2015. We'll have a lot more dollars to spend. We can, you know, hit up a Super Bowl ad or, you know, I don't know, whatever they end up doing. I I wonder if there's a lot of things that happen that this very easily could just be, oh, the developers need more time with the game. It's not running where they you know need it to be. They're not hitting their milestones. But I feel like there's so many other things behind the scenes that may have nothing to do with the game whatsoever. I mean, uh, it, this, this talk about so Dying Light is done by Warner Bros. So are they going to knock into that now as well? Which makes no sense because then they're competing against their own, their own game. Well, Ubisoft um, is kind of doing that with Far Cry and Assassin's Creed, aren't they? Yeah, it's really weird. I mean, if they have their game, put it out, I guess. I mean, if, if they feel like they're ready, I mean... They got such a big platform for this year now. If they can really go crazy, <laughs> I mean, I think they're slowly becoming quite, quite a hated company. Personally, I don't mind it them too much, but I don't know. Yeah, it's, I, cool. it's a very interesting thing, and and I don't know that we're gonna have any answer at least on our side of the uh, the fence over here. But hopefully, we'll get to see Batman at E3. Hopefully, mm-hmm. get our hands on it, and hopefully, come back and say, hey, it's super great. So your wait is worth it let's hit up some questions here kind of a shorter show this week we're both in e3 prep mode 100 percent full on um this question comes in from amy and uh she says given the news we've just seen about the potential for a ps4 being bundled with a ps vita in the ultimate player edition do you think nintendo would benefit from something similar pairing the wii u and 3ds together maybe making more of cross-platform gaming, depending, of course, on them having more games to support the actual idea. Thanks, and have a ton of fun at E3. I'll finish your card first. <laughs> Nintendo. So, PlayStation 4 bundling the two together. Basically, Vita, to me, is a dead platform. I don't know that we're going to see many big games. Maybe they'll throw a few bones at it um, just to keep people happy, mm-hmm. but it, it's kind of become the PlayStation 4 remote play player. So, bundling them together... You move Vita hardware. Maybe you can also get some software sales. Because remember, most of these consoles make majority of their profits on software and accessories, not on the console uh, itself. So for them, I think it makes sense. For Nintendo, first of all, they're not very uh, forward-thinking when it comes to ideas like this. (laughs) Second of all, so far we've seen very little integration between the 3DS and Wii U. Would it be cool? 
yes, but because the gamepad has a screen, I, I don't think they are... F- Go with the screen. You don't like the screen? It's not It's not very good, is it? I mean, it's okay. It's like a plastic... <laughs> Yes, it's like a freaking. It's not like an iPhone screen, but it's not a terrible screen. It's not a good screen either. Okay, it's we'll we'll leave it as a screen. No, no adjective, just a screen. But it's an SD screen because it has the screen. I don't think that like there's no benefit really to integrating the two platforms. Do you know what I mean? You can do off TV play. You can Mm -hmm. do touch screen based stuff. So. To me, if they're going to do some sort of integration, it will be with their next console. We've heard talks of them coming out with some sort of fused uh, platform where the games work on both or you can take them on the go and on your home console. To me, that's an idea that is in the oven uh, for later. But now, no, I don't see them making any bundle. I could see them redesigning or at least remarketing the Wii U or the 3DS. Mm -hmm. Um, But no, no bundle. I don't think that's in the future. Yeah, I mean, isn't it? It's almost hundred percent that the Vita is going to be bundled with the PS4. Yeah, I think that's. I've heard pretty. Yeah, that's pretty much hundred percent now. Um, I think apparently the they do sell a lot of uh, games to consoles with the Vita, mm-hmm. so they must do pretty well out of it. But yeah, I mean, that's, I've heard about perhaps being an infamous on that console as well. Oh, like um, a new infamous. Which, yeah, infamous for the portable system, mm. which will be quite interesting. But I mean. It won't look as good as the I mean, would you... PS4 okay, version. you don't own a Vita, right? I don't. So know. say you didn't have a PlayStation 4. Would you be interested mm-hmm. in buying a... Hmm, let's say. Let's say they charged... I'm going to give you American dollars, but the PS4 is $400. let us say they made a $550 uh, bundle, and it came with a Vita, mm-hmm. and the promise of remote play. Does that get you to spend an extra $150, or are you like, eh, I'll just take the PS4 and, and save my money? I probably just bought a PS4. Yeah. I, to me, like the, the yeah. allure of remote play is like. so small and has such a like very thin use. Like, what scenario yeah. doesn't your doesn't your PS4 have to be on? You have to have Wi-Fi right. for the Vita. So you, first of all, you are wasting power back at home because your, your PS4 is just like boom, just buzzing away, and then you got your Vita, which you have a wi a decent Wi-Fi signal to actually play it. So it's it's such like a small. I guess it could work eventually if like the Wi-Fi becomes better in the world and you can, like, play it on, like, planes or something. It just I don't seems know. to serve such but, a small purpose. Yeah, it's not... It's I mean, and there's no games thing. that are... It's not like, oh, buy Uncharted Golden Abyss for Vita and then carry over your Drake into Uncharted 4. Like, there's no... No. I, I, I mean, the only thing... What's that? Uh, was it All-Stars? PlayStation All-Stars, yeah. yeah that was cross-play. Yeah. But that was... Yeah. It didn't really... I don't know, like, to me, I don't feel like I have enough time to play all the PlayStation 4 games I want, so then playing them remotely. And again, like, that's the deal. PlayStation 4 is so gorgeous. Xbox One is so gorgeous. Why are you going to play that then on a five, whatever it is, five-inch screen? I feel like that dilutes the entire purpose. If you have the the funds to buy a PlayStation 4, if you have the time to play the game, I mean, why drop 400 on a PS4 if you're not even going to play on a big screen? Like, to me, it just... I mean, we we both we briefly spoke about the I see Halo Two on the on the tablet. Yeah. Xbox gonna start pushing that. Uh, that game was on the tablets on their window weird. Tablet I think games. they could, but again, like I don't know who that's for. I don't know because you have to have a connection. It's not like oh, I'm gonna take this on the tr- unless they make a three G th- or four G. I mean, I, yeah, I guess you download it, so you're gonna be like sitting on the train, tablet on your knees, holding the controller in your hands. Like, <laughs> who is this for? Yeah, when do they? I don't know. I I think it's a cool idea. I just don't see any practicality, really. I just see, like, I prefer to take Steam and my laptop. Yeah. And a controller, maybe, for, like, just in a hotel or something. Yeah. That's the max I'd go with. I, I mean, know. so you can leave your PS4 on, go to a hotel, connect mm-hmm. via, you know, Wi-Fi, and play your PlayStation 4 game. At a certain point, though, the PS4, it's like, why not just bring it with you? Like, I, I don't know. I find that, like... Yeah, quite strange. But um, next question comes from Nikolai in Denmark. Got a lot of a uh, lot of worldwide viewers here, which is so awesome. Anyway, he says, "Hey, oh, Zach and Scott, really looking forward to Uncharted Four at E3. On the other hand, Microsoft will be showcasing Halo. I see Uncharted and Halo as Sony and Microsoft's biggest franchises. So, mm-hmm. what do you think about the battle between those two? Which of the games are you most excited for, and which one is going to impress the most? Uh, the one that's going to impress the most is definitely Uncharted." Um, 
the one I'm most excited for is Uncharted. Really? <laughs> yeah, I just... I don't know. I mean, I probably want Last of Us more, to be honest. I mean, we've heard about... Um, briefly, we speak about this, but Naughty Dog are working on a another big project. project and apparently it's in the same league as Uncharted right. on PS4. So that's exciting. And that could be... I was thinking that could be Last of Us. It could be easy. They're be just going to become an annualized studio. Uncharted, Last of Us. Uncharted, and, Last of Us. It won't be coming next year. It'll be in these couple of yeah. years. It's only, it's only in pre-production. Who knows? I mean, so. I think I agree with you that Uncharted 4 will be the more technically impressive game. But I will say, if they are able to evolve the Halo formula in some way, you know, there's been talks of making it more open. If they can do something new, and Uncharted is just a very linear but still gorgeous uncharted game i could see halo 5 getting a little bit more after buzz i think in the moment you know the the big beautiful thing is going to get all the the accolades but beyond that if uncharted mm-hmm. 4 is just a prettier uncharted 3 yeah. halo could you know i i would like to see i know I, I like linear experiences i like a story i can delve into so I'm fine with it being a bit more linear. I totally do too. As long as they don't make yeah. seven foot corridors like the Order, then I'm 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 perfectly happy. Yeah, don't just have like a shooting gallery of people that. Yeah, I mean, I kill like millions of people. Maybe. Would you like to see <laughs> Uncharted incorporate maybe some of the Last of Us mechanics? I mean, like something like apparently it's a lot of darker, isn't it? I'm hearing this game's a lot more darker yeah. than the um the previous like, games, which is interesting. Even like crafting, maybe, or I I don't yeah. know, just some sort of exploration maybe. beyond. I know they do the climbing stuff, but. I, I don't want to play a very pretty shooting game. Like I'd rather Uncharted somehow become more of an explorer as as opposed to just mass yeah. m- murder man. Mass <laughs> murder. He does kill a lot of people and he acts like he doesn't care afterwards. I thought it was interesting that initially there was thoughts that maybe Drake wouldn't be in this and now it seems like all but 100% that he is the focus of this game again. Yeah, I mean, I want to ask one question. What do you th- who, do you, who do you think is going to show up, show up the most? Uh, Halo or Uncharted E3 this year? The most, like, actual stuff? Like, yeah, like gameplay oh. or trailers um, or just, more, just to make content. Like. My thinking would be... It's got to be Microsoft. <sighs> I, think. I would say Halo just because of Microsoft, but at the same time, mm. I feel like Uncharted 4 may be farther along. Like, I... No, it's it, it's gone down a couple of pegs. I, I know that they've had a lot of... of people leaving and stuff but still got gameplay yeah. I don't know what you mean I think they showed a decent like minute of gameplay like not minute but just like a trailery gameplay thing the reason I say this the, the reason the... I say this is because 343 is fairly new at, at full on mm-hmm. Halo development whereas Naughty Dog has you know been with Uncharted from the beginning and probably have a lot of the you know, not the exact pieces in place, but at least the the guidelines in place for how that game gets developed, where it goes. Maybe the the people leaving really threw that off kilter, but uh, I don't know. I'm guessing you think Halo for sure. Yeah, be more Halo. I think I'm gonna push it big time this year, yeah. and then about maybe about next year, next next uh, next full. I think it'll be interesting to see how Halo at Microsoft fares against Destiny at Sony. And Philip Harris asks us. Do you guys think that Destiny will live up to the hype? Um, yeah. And this is such a tough question. Uh, an interesting quote today, or, or this week, I guess, mm-hmm. was someone from the, the Destiny team said that they are hoping and trying to create the exact same experience on both last gen and next gen, which just... You worried that you worried, you got worried about that, yeah. didn't you, But I swear every developer says that if they're working on both gen, because they don't want to... You think it's just a, a PR the... move to not piss people off? Well, it's going to be the same game, but it's going to look obviously visually better. Yeah. I think they're always trying to make the same game. Um, they won't like lose features on last year. Yeah, Destiny is one that I could see going either way. I could see it being a game of the year. I could also see it going the way of something like Rage, um, where it's really hyped and looks really cool, and then you play it and you're like, mm-hmm. "Oh my god!" Like what? <laughs> I'd, I'd just say like we're gonna have like stuff on it, and yeah. well, we're gonna be able to play it, and we can tell you like. If it's worth, yeah, being we will know about very next, soon. Next We're gonna have a, a good chance yeah. to, to get a lot of very, it in very very soon. Actually. Yeah, so that that'll be fun, and we'll have an update. I, I forgot to mention this one. It's just a quick one from David, um, and he just asked, "Do you think Uncharted Four will live up to the standard of The Last of Us, given that that game receives so much praise and is considered the best game of the generation by many?" I feel like they've got, they've learned quite a lot from the the way the story in that game was mm-hmm. and why people liked it. So I think they're really gonna. I'm almost worried they won't feel like Uncharted anymore when it when it comes out. It's gonna be like so like more darker and 
Because Uncharted, Will Uncharted lose has that? Uh, a tone that is so much more light and yeah. so much more jovial. It's almost like a comedy. It's like Indiana Jones, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like a style. comedy adventure, yeah. lighthearted. You're not going to have anybody... I mean, they have some touching moments, but it's not going to be... Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I, I guess it depends where they want to go. If they do go darker, if they, you know, play up a big love interest and have them get kidnapped or something like that, you know, maybe they could... Yeah, I mean, it could be like a death or something that just sends him the wrong way and... He could still like make jokes and stuff, but it won't be. It will be a little bit more serious. Yeah. I reckon, maybe. I, don't know. I think that you also have to remember that The Last of Us is the pinnacle of their experience on PlayStation Three. So they made Uncharted One, Uncharted Two, Uncharted Three, and then their fourth game. Um, they are sort of basically think of it as their senior thesis, like their culmination of all their years of study on PlayStation Three um, was The Last of Us, and it kind of it was one of those things that just you, you sometimes strike gold, and I think that. They were able to do the zombie thing in not a very obnoxious zombie way, and they were able to build these two characters, Joel and Ellie, that just clicked with everyone. No one seemed to, you know, not love those guys. And and is that a flash in the pan type luck of the draw moment? Can they recreate that? I think there's going to be a lot of, a lot of big anticipation for Uncharted Four because of The Last of Us, and I wonder, you know. As these scales turn, do you think The Last of Us will become the premier franchise and Uncharted will sort of take a back seat? It all depends on this game, yeah. doesn't it? And we haven't seen enough of it to really judge, but yeah, you definitely it definitely could become the main the main element or even bring back like Crash Bandicoot and that could really um bring back the the fun side of uh, Naughty Dog again. Yeah. In some ways. The next question is from Trail Beach in Florida. He swears that that is his actual name, which is, is pretty awesome. Um, and he wants Game Riot and Ghost's opinion on why developers withhold information if the game is already in development. For some example, uh, Fallout 4 from Bethesda. Everyone knows it's being made, yet they refuse to say anything official. What do you think they do this for? Um... It's just very, very early in development. I don't. I get frustrated if they announce the game too early. So I'm, I'm pleased they're not going to announce it. I announce it, like when it, perhaps like a year until release, maybe or even less than that. Um, I hate when they do that long, long right. cycle. It's just a nightmare. Um, it just constantly just keeps going and going and going. And you just want to get the game and see gameplay and stuff. Right. I have to imagine a lot of it is the marketing plan. Like, okay, we've got, you know, we're going to show a trailer. We're going to get this demo. We're going to bring the press out to play it. And that cycle Mm -hmm. probably has a very set plan. And why reveal something, just throw up a logo, Fallout 4, and then what, go dark for a while? It would probably make more sense, build more pre-orders, build more hype if you have something substantial to show with the game. So I totally agree. Where I mean, if if it is coming out next year, I don't know why they wouldn't announce it at E3, but... It's got to come out next year, the end of next year. You think so? I can't. I want, I want it to. <laughs> I could see that I being a 2016 it. game. Oh. So far away. But again, like, think about next fall. Uncharted 4, Halo 5 Guardians, whatever else is out there. Like, again, this is why I was saying earlier, every year gets delayed to the next year because you, you run into the same problems constantly. Now, February mm. and March are just as packed as October. So it's like... What, you're getting away from one pack of wolves just to dive right into another. Well, apparently Ubisoft is announcing a new IP, a new big IP, and if they like say it's coming out next year, <laughs> I'm gonna like hit my head on the desk and just slam it like several I'm times. Still, I know it's gonna be delayed. Still, fingers crossed for that Watch Dogs Two trailer. It's not what I, I I think we're gonna get a Watch Dogs Two announcement this year. Really? That's, is that your big like random? That's that is definitely a random thing. prediction. I don't know if it's gonna be at E3 or like the VGAs at the end of the year, but. So it'll be this year. I think we'll hear about it this year. I, I put my fingers in there. The final question of the day comes from Timmy, and he asks, if you could only take one game to an island and had to play that game for the rest of your life, what game would you take? Fallout 3. Really? <laughs> you could play that forever? Wander around? Could, it, it would simulate just, what you're feeling in real life, that you're on this... Yeah, I could learn lessons <laughs> from it. Like, oh, I can do Maybe that. Maybe you should take the forest, a, then. If I could find a pit boy somewhere... That'd be good. Or, or the forest, then you'll learn how to fight off the, the resident okay. cannibals. and. Oh, God. That'd be, pretty... <laughs> That'd be really scary if you had that game. Yeah, hope... And it was on an island by yourself. Hopefully you could Ooh. save your stuff in real life, though, unlike that. Yeah, I think I would probably take something like Super Smash Brothers or Mario Kart. It would keep me happy. It would keep me smiling. And it's like multiplayer. But you need, I need people to play with, though. Wait, can you play online? 
Was it ever in well, the island? island? <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess now that I think about it, maybe that makes you more sad. Cause you're like, oh dear God, I wish I had friends. I wish I had people. So yeah, maybe. Where? Huh? I mean, you can play against a computer. I don't want to think about yeah, that. that. It, fun, it gives me anxiety just thinking about being alone. Yeah, it's just as going, I'm going on the plane and I've been <laughs> playing Lost in the Forest. And oh. Don't get lost in that forest. Well, guys and girls, we will not be lost on E3 for long. All will be revealed in just a couple of days. Both Scott and I will be there in person playing all of the latest and greatest. Let us know in the comments below which game you want us to check out most. Maybe it's Destiny, maybe it's Hunt Horrors of the Gilded Age, maybe mm -hmm. it's Homefront 2, perhaps it's Batman, or maybe it's even... Super Smash Brothers Brawl or four? What's it called? Wii U? Smash Bros? I have I have faced out. I don't know. I think it's Super on. Smash Brothers Wii U is what it's called. <laughs> Anyways, let us know what you want us to play the most at the show, and we'll try to do that for you. Both of us will be bringing lots of coverage, and hopefully we'll be doing some uh, in-person podcasts. That should be a lot of fun. Don't forget to send in your questions to ghostro at gmail.com, subject line podcast. Follow Game Riot on Twitter for all of his American adventures. Twitter.com slash Game Riot Army. Follow me on Twitter for all of my Nintendo hopes and dreams, twitter.com slash ghostrobo. And uh, yeah, we are mere days. The Last Guardian. The Last Guardian. It's going to be there. Is I it? think it's going to I think it's going to be on PS3 and PS4. No. That yeah. would be such an insult. After all these years, it's cross-gen. You just say it's coming next year and it'll be on both. I think it's coming out this year, PS4. I think... Okay. Make, one, make one random prediction now, like any... We go. Okay. Well, now I, I just said mine, but I, I can't say it. No, that's, that, that's the last guy. was more. Oh, that's funny. your random prediction? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mine. Oh, God. Let's see. That's completely out there that you think may happen. <sighs> Ooh, put on the spot. Goodness great. I mean, I, I, I'm going to say this isn't really that out there, but I'm going to say that Battlefront 3, they are trying to make it as a, a Call of Duty competitor. So they go totally first-person shooter, totally hardcore, perks, systems, all sorts of things. They're going to make this their next major title um, and really go after the hardcore. That, I don't like your... Don't like you don't that. like that? You want it to be goofy and silly? <laughs> I thought you go feeling silly, but I want to be like third person Battlefront style. Not, why put Battlefront in the title? Star, Star Wars first person in an era when Battlefield 4 can't even run right and Call of Duty is, you know, definitely running out of steam. Imagine a Battlefront. Battlefield got patched recently, Ghost okay. Rover. It's working <laughs> fine now after like how many, how many months? nine months. I mean, yeah. seriously, like, okay, let's let's think of these trailers. Battlefield Hardline next to Call of Duty Advanced Warfare next to Star Wars Battlefront 3 first-person shooter online multiplayer. Oh Which God. one is going to be the talk of the show? Battlefront, but I don't want a first-person shooter from that. I want it to be like a Battlefront game. Okay. Anyway. You've got to give me another prediction because Last Guardian, we both said. I said Last Guardian on PS3 and PS4, and it's been announced at E3. For next year. For next year. Okay, yeah. we'll, let you, we'll let you slide with that one. Guys and girls, we will see you at E3. Next time we record this podcast, it will be in Los Angeles, California. Cannot wait for that. Hope you guys are excited. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, we will see you all later.